All right, Bladesmith, to find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Randy, you're up first. You ready? I am. Let's do this. I don't know what to expect, and I know they're going to hit it hard. I'm a little bit jibbery. My legs won't give out from under me a little bit, but I think I'll be OK. <laughs> All right, Randy, let's talk about your Sword of Mars here. First up, the Damascus pattern you have here is gorgeous. Thank you. The weapon design is very aggressive for thrusting and slashing. Now, your handle construction. If you reverse this, it'll be easier to have something to lock onto. The fact that the flare is right here, forcing my hand to open up if I want to marry into the hilt. This is a very sharp weapon. The tip pierces all the way through, cuts on the way out. It's pointy and scary, and it will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, Dan, it is your turn. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. I was hoping the kill test would be a dummy. I know heads will roll. I'm feeling really confident. I want to see what this thing does. All right, Dan, let's talk about your weapon here. I love the balance of your blade. When I go forward, it's not hard to pull back to go in again for another kill. Now, your handle construction. It's curved enough to where it doesn't want to fly out of my hand. It's got a good grip and control for this. Your edge allows for very deep cuts into the abdomen right there. The only issue we have is that your tip picked up a bend when it's chopped into the spine. But your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, Attila's armies were basically one large cavalry. And through his military campaigns, he revolutionized the use of horse in military conflicts. So to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be chopping into these horse skulls. Randy, you're up first. Are you ready? I guess so. OK. I designed my blade with a sharp, sharp edge. And I'm a little worried. My stomach's up and my throat a little bit. Okay, so right off the bat, the biggest thing is that this section from right about here to here has lost its edge. There's a couple of small rolls. Blade's still straight. It's all in one piece, still solid. Nicely done. It's a very strong blade. Thank you. All right, Dan, are you ready? No, but let's do <laughs> it. Everybody says that. The first test bent my blade. So I'm feeling a little bit of fear going into the strength test. This will kill blades. It's a scary, brutal thing. Okay, so before we get to the obvious, I really like the design of your blade. It's got a great weight to it. Had a really good feel in my hand. The balance was really nice. See all that space around your tang? With that room for that blade to move inside the guard, it could just create so much stress that it cut loose right there at the corner. If it were all tight, there wouldn't be any stress. There's no discoloration here, so it's not that there, were, there was a crack here before. Your grain structure looks fine. It was a well-designed piece, but obvious flaw. Dan, unfortunately, your blade suffered a catastrophic failure in the middle of our strength test, which means that we can no longer test it. 
I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then please leave the forge. It hurts, but my sword breaking, it's gonna be a reminder that I have to push harder and be better. Dan, keep up the work, it's a good sword. I came here to prove that I can compete with the big dogs and that I do know what I'm doing and I think I might have accomplished that. Randy, the strength and efficiency of your weapon in the kill test have earned you the title of Forged and Fire Champion and a check for how much? $10,000. That's right, $10,000. Good job, brother. I won Forged and Fire. It's reality. How do you feel? Good. To be a <laughs> champion and be recognized as a good bladesmith is uh, real good. This is my happy and excited place. Oh, good, sir. Thank you. If you didn't recognize it. All right, veterans, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows to this big carcass. Tyler, you're up first. Ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's check. I'm ready. All right, Tyler, your handle construction, just right. Your edge is very sharp. Overall, sir, this saber will kill. Perfect. All right, Gene, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do this, Doug. All right, Gene, this is a heavy sword, very forward heavy. But when you have a forward heavy blade that you're hitting and meets resistance, a cylindrical, almost circular handle makes it twist in my hand. So probably this is the reason why the chain came off. But your blade is sharp, it will heal. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, December 25th. 1776, George Washington leads the Continental Army across a frozen Delaware River to attack the Hessians at Trenton, New Jersey. And he probably didn't chip his way through the ice, but that's not gonna keep us from our strength test, the ice block chop. Tyler, you're up first, are you ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, so Tyler, your chain fell off, but there's no damage on your edge. Your handle's comfortable other than the chain. You nailed it. Thanks. Good job. All right, Gene. Do it. <laughs> All right, Gene, your blade's edge is still there. And it's still short. The issue is uh, the rest of your chain fell off and it's picked up a bend. I have less issue with that and more issue with this polished handle. It's just hard to hold on to. But it is strong and it does have an edge. So good job. Hurrah. All right, veterans, our sharpest test today is the Hessen Charge. This is all about what your edge will do to these dummies. Tyler, you up first. You ready for this? Yep.
All right, Tyler, the weight of your weapon does prevent me from going very fast, but you have a very sharp edge all the way through. Your weapon, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Gene, it's your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do this, Doug. All right, Gene, to be able to maintain a good grip on this, more of the cuts I create are more impact as opposed to a slash where it cuts all the way through. So you have some cuts here that are more nicks, deep nicks, because you have a very sharp edge. And for this test, sir, your weapon will cut. Awesome. Tyler, Gene, first of all, I want to thank you both for your service. You're both champions in my mind. You've already won your branch divisions but there can only be one Battle of the Branches champion. And you'll walk out of here with a check for $50,000. And that champion is... Tyler, congratulations. You are the Battle of the Branches Forged and Fire champion. Gene, please surrender your blade. <laughs> there's a lot of Marines out there and there's a lot of great guys in the Marine Corps. And so for me to stand here and represent them is pretty humbling. I learned too that it's not about uh, just the metal being forged in fire. I feel like I've been forged in fire. And it's how you handle the ups and downs, the wins, the losses, and it'll determine real quick how you've been heat treated throughout your life. Tyler, congratulations. You overcame every obstacle set in front of you. You beat out all the other Smiths, and now you're the Battle of the Branches Forged and Fire champion. That's a title that comes with a check for 50 thousand dollars and most importantly bragging rights good job <laughs> my brother please present your blade to the judges i'm super excited when this whole thing started i had no idea how it was all going to turn out feels good to have represented the army the fact that i just won fifty thousand dollars is, is starting to set in <laughs> i'm sergeant tyler hackbarth and i'm the new battle of the branches champion Bladesmiths, to test the lethality of your cutlass, I'm going to inflict lethal wounds on these ballistic dummies. Jason, you're up first. You ready? I sure hope so, Doug. Let's do this. All right, Jason, you got a very big handle here. But at least it's got the swells, it's got an indexing to where I hold on to it, I can tell where the edge is. The weight that you have in this weapon is so light and sense that I can wield it even around here. You've got the clavicle into the ribs, all the way through the lungs, and definitely it will kill. All I ever wanted to hear, you made my day. Seth, you're up next, you ready? Get some. Right, Seth, your sword is forward heavy without a balance coming back. I don't know whose shoulder's gonna hurt more. The dummies are mine, but your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. Test the strength and durability of your swords. I'll be chopping through these bones and then attacking that peg leg. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to these targets. It's about what these targets do to your blades. Jason, you're up. Are you ready? Nope. <laughs> the 
The balance of your weapon is really nice, which is surprising because you've made a two-handed cutlass. Your blade held up very well, except for the one little chip, and it's not even a chip, it's a roll. So it didn't blow out. It's a good job. Thank you, Dave. All right, Seth, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Seth, first up, this thing's a beast. It is probably a pound heavier than your competitor's sword. Your blade, I mean, I can run my finger to nail down this. I can see a couple of glinting spots, but it really didn't take any damage. All right, bladesmiths, let's find out if there's any edge left. This is the rope cut and pirate sail slash. To test the edge of your cutlass, I will cut this rope, which will raise the sail, and then I will slash the sail. This is all about what your sword will do to the sail and rope. Jason, you up first. Ready? Yes, sir. Jason, your edge cut through the rope easily and cuts with every part that the edge met on this pirate sail. Overall, sir, your sword will cut. Awesome. Seth, how you feeling? Feeling good, let's go. Let's do this. All right, Seth, what are the chances you find a very dull spot on the first cut on the rope? But on the second cut, it found another spot that was sharp. But on the sail, working a heavy sword like this affects my cuts. Jason, Seth, the judges have tested your weapons and they've made a final decision. The new Forged and Fire champion is... Jason. Congratulations, you're the new Forge and Fire champion. Seth, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Seth, your weapon was significantly heavier, and it had a stout edge that underperformed on the sharpest test. For that reason, we're sending you home. Seth, please surrender your blade. No regrets, man. I think I made an exceptional blade, but it is what it is, you know? Elimination's elimination, that's the name of the game. I'm proud of myself, but I don't feel as good as I would have if I had won. Jason, congratulations. You are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a bundle of bullion that's worth 10 grand. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Come on, man. That's incredible. Please present your blade to the judges. What? Forge and Fire champion? I don't know how to respond because I never expected to be here saying that. I don't know. <laughs> what? What do you want from me? All right, Blazebits, to find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'm going to deliver slashes and thrusts on this pig carcass. Seth, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Seth, from the snotter to the trotter, every cut with this, as you can see, offers a very deep, lacerating cut. The only issue is that your blade did pick up a little bit of a bend. But overall, sir, with the way this weapon moves and feels, it will kill. Thank you very much. Good job. <laughs> All right, Stephen, your turn. You ready, sir? Yes, sir.
Why, Steven, let's talk about your saber here. It's a heavy, unbalanced sword. The minute you pick up, it wants to pull straight down. It's hard to wield. But the weight of your sword here will definitely bash in and cut. So it will kill. Thank you. Oh, bladesmiths, a saber is supposed to be a sturdy weapon. So let's see how yours hold up on our strength test. The ram skull chop. Now I'm going to take each of your sabers and with no mercy at all, bash them into this ram skull. It's not only going to test the overall strength of your knife, but the heat treat on your edge. Now, I don't really care what your swords do to the skulls. I want to see what the skulls do to your swords. Now, Seth, you're up first. You ready to go? Swing it good. All right, Seth, your edge held up, but we do have a bigger bend in the blade than we had before. Your guard is now mobile, and both of your bolsters came off as well. So this mechanical connection right in here failed, but the connection between your blade and your handle is still sturdy. You took some damage, but you survived. Good job. Thank you, sir. Steve, after seeing that, how you feel? I don't know. Let's see. Well, Steve, we obviously have a problem here. You got a very coarse grain structure in here, so I don't know if there was enough tempering done on this 5160 blade. I mean, one strike is all it took and snapped it right in half, so that's obviously a problem. Well, Steve, there's nothing left to test. Your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure and can no longer continue in this competition, and for that reason, I have to ask you to please exit the forge. I'm upset. I'm very disappointed that the blade broke like that. I'm not coming home as a champion, but I'm coming home a whole lot smarter. I've made some friends that I'll have forever. I would do this again, no questions asked. Well, Seth, this is a competition where the best blade wins. Your blade survived this strength test. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. How do you feel? Surreal right now. Well, good job, brother. You're a champion. I could not be more excited about this experience. This competition has been some of the most fun of my life. The money's going to do some things for the shop, and my wife and my daughter are going to go on a real nice trip. My name is Seth Boris, and I'm the Forge and Fire champion. Welcome to the kill test. Your sabers look deadly. To find it out, I will take your weapon, deliver some slashes and thrusts on this ballistic stun. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yeah. All right, John, first up, let's talk about the handle construction. It's a little bit on the big side, but I'm able to hold on to it. Now, your edge, it's very sharp. And it is a pleasure to wield because aside from looking beautiful, it'll kill. Thank you very much. All right, Chris, your turn. Are you ready, sir? <laughs> yes, sir, I sure am. All right, Chris, let's talk about your saber here. First up, what I love about it, it's got a sharp edge. Every swing I do, 
cuts. The one thing here is that you did pick up a little bit of a bend right here at this junction. It's warped a little bit, but it pierces and cuts, and most importantly, it will heal. Thank you, sir. All right, Bladesmiths, for a strength test, I'm gonna take your sabers, and I'm going to beat them and stab them into these field obstacles. Now, I'm not really concerned about what your swords do to our obstacles. I want to see the opposite, what they do to your swords. John, you're up first. You ready to go? Ready to go. Nice job, John. I like the blade. The sword itself overall is on the heavy side. The handle is a lot there, a lot of extra weight. It does help counterbalance quite a bit, though. Still got a good edge on it. There's some pretty heavy strikes on there, and the blade bent but came back to true. It's all right, tight, and straight. Good job. Thank you. How are you feeling, Chris? Good as I can be, sir. All right. Right here. Yeah. Oh. No cuts, no blood. Lucky day. Chris, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure in our strength test, and unfortunately, you cannot continue with testing, which means you cannot be the Forge Fire Champion. Please exit the forge. Come on forward, pal. I did have a small issue when it got to my heat treat. That's all right, man. I didn't want to risk a second quench because I didn't want to make it overly brittle. I do have some regret about that decision at this point. Of course, I would have liked to be the Forge and Fire champion, but I am really proud of myself as a weapons maker, and I plan on getting right back in my forge when I get home, and I'm going to move forward as ever. Well, John, General Patton was known for being a tough guy, and you made a tough and sharp sword that really honors his name. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, come on over <laughs> and shake our hands. Good job, brother. It's a beautiful sword. Yeah. I'm the new Forged and Fire champion. You did a phenomenal job on that hatred. Thank you, sir. I'm proud of what I did, and it's been a fun deal. Hey, can I get a fortune fire bell buckle now? No bell buckle. Come on. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out how lethal your weapons are according to its historic design, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing slashes, and thrust on this poor carcass. Mitch, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Standing there getting ready to see Doug go at this boar with my sword. I'm a little nervous. My heart is in my throat. My heart's beating fast. I feel like my legs are shaking and I'm trying to make them not. All right, Mitch, let's talk about your sword here. Your edge coupled with the weight that you have here allows for very deep cuts with every strike. Overall, sir, you'll kill. Thank you. All right, Peyton, it's your turn. You ready? Oh, yeah. For this test, I'm not too nervous. I'm just excited to see it happen, honestly. I get to see this board get cut in half, <laughs> hopefully.
All right, Peyton. That was joyous. What I like about this sword, it's not just about the edge or the point, it's the balance of this. I can actually use some velocity and it cuts deep. Overall, sir, it will heal. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I will be attacking our armored knights here. Now, this is not about what your blades are going to do to that target, about what that target's going to do to your blades. Mitch, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. OK. This is definitely more nerve-wracking than the boar test. If it's going to fail, I would say this would definitely be the test that would cause the failure. I'm just saying to myself, please don't break. Please don't break. I think I just peed a little. All right, Mitch, your edge did take some damage here. You can see the chip right there and some rolls. And your sword is heavy. You know, this is a, a lot of weight for a single-handed sword, more in the range of a two-handed sword as far as the weight goes. But um, she held up. She's in one piece. Good job, Mitch. Thank you. All right, Peyton, you're up. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> one of those, I don't know which way my head's going to go. Yeah. All right, Peyton, it's weighty, but the, the weight is all back in my hand, so it doesn't feel as heavy in the blade. This sword has a much better point of balance than the other sword. Your blade did take some chips and some edge rolling, but I think you, your grinds are beautiful. The sword is all solid. You did a good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test, the sandbag gauntlet. Now, to test the sharpness of your weapon, I will slash across these bags. Now, unlike the strength, this is all about how sharp your blades are and how well they cut these bags. Mitch, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Mitch, so despite some of the damage of rolls and chips, it wasn't an issue at all in cutting these bags. It will cut. Thank you. All right, Peyton, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Peyton, the handle construction is smooth, but will avoid enough to where I wrap my hand around it and I get a very good grip. You will cut. Thank you. Mitch, Peyton, the judge's deliberation is complete. You guys have done fantastic work on these finale weapons, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Peyton, congratulations. You're the Forged and Fire champion. Mitch, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Mitch, you brought us a sword that performed well in all three of our tests. So this came down to the finer points of craftsmanship, as in where to place the balance point on that blade and the general weight. That balance point being so far forward made it harder to wield and harder to control, and that's why we're letting you go. I understand. Mitch, you've been a great competitor this entire competition, but at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your blade. Obviously a little disappointed, being my first uh, sword, nothing to compare it to. I thought the weight felt good. I tried to keep the six to eight inches balance point that I was told normally swords carry. So overall, happy with what I turned in and uh, I'm happy for Peyton. If I had to lose to anyone, I'd just soon lose to him. Peyton, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Please present your sword to the judges. I'm the next Forge and Fire champion. Ah, oh, it's just crazy. 
As soon as I heard my name, it was just like a weight just got pulled off my chest. Just like, oh, it's over. <laughs> Finally can breathe. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. I'm going to take your rapiers and deliver some killing slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. For these musketeer swords, it's time to find out if you're all for one champion or one for all the runner ups. <laughs> Jesse, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's cut some bacon. All right, let's do this. You gotta work out. All right, Jesse, this edge is sharp. A rapier cut a big in half? <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> for every slash, the edge lands exactly where I want it to be. Okay. Overall, sir, for this test, it will kill. <laughs> All right, ready, Teddy? Let's do it. Let's do this. All right, Teddy, your edge. When you're slashing with the razor's edge that you have on your blade, it slices easily and deeply on this big carcass. Your weapon, sir, will kill. Awesome. Nice. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, a little thing I like to call the wheel of pain. Now, a rapier needs to be a fast, light, flexible weapon. We're gonna see how flexible yours are. All right, Jesse, so I've got your blade strapped into our wheel of pain right now. Now, I'm going to be flexing it in both directions. I'll be taking it all the way to that far red peg, holding it for about three seconds, and we'll see if it comes back true, and then we're going the other direction, all right? Go nuts. <laughs> that ship sailed. <laughs> It's back to true, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Okay, Jesse, first off, remarkable. But I mean, there's a lot of weight in this blade, a lot of mass. So to have it flex the way it did and come back virtually to true, this blade is still straight enough to fight with, which is excellent. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Teddy, you ready for this? Let's do it. So, Teddy, you can see where it took the bends here and here. And the initial bend, it actually bent this way, and then we bent it back, and it went the other way. So it, it leaves some question about the heat treat, you know, how, how even it is through the blade. It, you know, it's just, I worry about that bend. Teddy, unfortunately, a less than perfect heat treat has led to your rapier taking a permanent bend. Now, this is going to affect accuracy when it comes to the use of the weapon in our sharpness test. And for that reason, this is a catastrophic failure and you cannot continue with this competition. Come on forward, my friend. Good job, brother. I'm definitely not happy. No one enjoys having anything they build not work properly. I've had a blast. 
I've made a few good friends. I've been able to take time and build something I otherwise wouldn't have built. So the experience has been great. Jesse, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that is the title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job, brother. I'm on cloud nine. This is probably the most fun I've ever had doing hard labor. I proved to myself that I'm capable to do a whole lot more than I thought I could. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapons will do, I will take your weapon, deliver some slashes and thrusts on this boar carcass. Brent, you're up first. You ready for this? Oh, yeah, let's do it so my knees will stop shaking. All right, let's do this. All right, Brett is talking about your Tizona here. The balance of this blade allows me to really move around with it. And it's a very sharp edge. Overall, this weapon is one that you can move and bring to combat, and it will kill. Thank you, sir. Good job. All right, Thomas, your turn. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. All right, let's do this. Your tip thrust easy and cuts on the way out. And your edge, as you can see, same number of cuts cut all the way through. Your first sword, it will kill. Good job. Thank you. It's OK to be thrilled, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? <laughs> all right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the armored chop. To test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I'll be chopping into our armored knights here. Brent, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Brent, you've got a couple of chips and rolls. I don't know that it'll affect the performance of your blade. It's still sharp. As far as the design of your blade, that's a very slick handle. I like to not be able to do that as easily. But you did good. Strong sword, one piece. Good job. Thank you. Tomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Swing away. All right, Thomas, this has a really fine edge to it. And where it made contact, there are multiple rolls. Uh, it's that super fine edge just being pushed over as it hits that armor. It's an amazingly light sword for as wide as that is. That, that's very good work. I mean, it's a very broad blade, and it's got a very light feel to it. The handle on this, the wrapping on there, yeah, it gives a good grip. It felt really good in my hand. Bottom line? It's a strong sword, held up beautifully. Good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpness test, the fish slice. Test the edge of your weapon. I will slash away at these salmons. Brent, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do this.
All right, let's talk about your sword here. Cut all the way through the fish except for that. It's a sharp edge. All the cuts here are very clean. Overall, sir, you will cut. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Thomas. Ready for sushi? I am ready. Let's do this. It's really down to the wire at this point. If my blade doesn't perform as well as Brent's, I'm definitely out of this competition. All right, Thomas, every cut was clean all the way through. Once again, the edge here, despite some of the rolls it took earlier, have no issues in performance and quality of cuts. Overall, sir, it will cut. All right, bladesmiths, the new Forge and Fire champion is. Brent, congratulations. You're the new Forge and Fire champion. Thomas, unfortunately, a setback in your home forge cost you a little bit of detail when it came to your final product. And for that reason, please leave the forge. I'm super disappointed that I didn't win, but I came out here, I made a knife with a drum set, I made a sword for the first time. I'm just so proud of myself for having taken the risk, putting myself outside of my comfort zone. And right now I feel like a rock star. Brent, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, my friend. Oh, it feels amazing. The adrenaline right now is just through the friggin' roof. I'd like to thank God for this opportunity, my wife for her support. Just thank you, everyone. I have trouble containing everything. There's so many emotions inside right now that I just want to let them all out. Yeah! All right, Blazemiths, your Spatha swords look amazing. It's time to find out what kind of lethal damage they can do. To do that, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing slashes and blows on this more than willing ballistic dummy. Alex, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Alex, first up, I can really appreciate the beauty that you have with your Damascus pattern right there. It really stands out. Very clean lines. The medial ridge you have on here, I can imagine well, how much work that takes to get it almost perfectly straight all the way through to the tip. Your tip is sharp enough to penetrate with the thrust and lacerate on the way out. And most importantly, it will kill. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. All right, Kevin, it's your turn, so you ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Alex's uh, Spatha just destroyed that uh, blow sticks tummy. And now I'm feeling anxious, excited. So I got the adrenaline going. It doesn't have a ridge, does it? Where it's up. No medial ridge on either side of the blade. It's one of the parameters, right? Kevin, your blade must fall within our parameters in order to be tested evenly and fairly with your competitors. Your blade does not have a central ridge that was a parameter that was outlined before we ever sent you home. And for that reason, you cannot be the Forged and Fire champion. Come on, my friend. You know, it's just a bummer I can't see it tested. That's what I really want to see. I want to see how it holds up. Nice work on that handle. Buddy. Thank you, I appreciate it. When I was making it, it, it had the defined ridge in it. Just with the sanding and grinding, it just took more of it off. But uh, this whole experience has been a blast. Congratulations. 
This isn't a loss. I'm coming home with a $10,000 experience. Alex, you made a sharp and deadly spatha, but not only that, you made something that is detailed and beautiful. Your attention to detail has elevated you to the title of Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations. Your title comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. This is pretty wild. I came here to challenge myself and put myself through a super rigorous test, and I came out on top, and it feels great. This $10,000, I'm actually going to give it all straight to my parents. They supported me through college as I was learning bladesmithing, and they're both getting ready to retire, so uh, this is all going to them. All right, bladesmiths. My name is Douglas Markaida. I will kill the dummies. They are prepared to die. <laughs> to find out what kind of lethal damage your weapons will do, I will take your rapiers and deliver some thrusts and slashes on this ballistics dummy. Ronnie, up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Ron, let's talk about your rapier here. It is a little bit on the heavier side, but it's wieldable. And with a nice swish of a slash, it cuts deeply. Overall, sir, your rapier, it will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, Jesse, it's your turn. You ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I'm extremely nervous. I immediately start questioning my heat treat and, you know, just a million things go through your head. All right, Jesse, let's talk about your blade here. It's about the same weight. The thrusts penetrate all the way, and to slash, well, deep cuts. Overall, sir, your blade will kill. Thank you, sir. That's what I came to hear. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. And yes, I am going to torture your blades. Ron, you're up first. All right. You haven't guessed already. It's a flex test. I'm feeling a little nervous coming into this test. If I left any uneven spots, that could impact the flexibility of that blade. Okay, Ron, that's a brutal test, and you did really well. If you look at your blade, there's the slightest of bend in one direction. Barely noticeable. The dimensions of the guard are spot on. Thank you. And uh, it's definitely a strong blade. Nicely done. Thank you very much. Jesse, you ready for this? About as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs, but go ahead. <laughs> First things, Jesse, the guard's in the proper scale. Really nicely done. Issue is, you picked up a bit of a bend. Still completely functional, usable blade. 
Well done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, this is the sharpness test. This is all about how sharp your blades and what it does to this dummy. Ron, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Ron, let's talk about your edge here. This cut through the clothing and right into the foam. And of course, when thrusting, it goes deep. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Jesse, it's your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Jesse, I can still see the little bend it took at the tip, but the edges are razor sharp. On the thrust, it goes deep, it will cut. Thank you, sir. Ron, Jesse, you guys have turned in some really quality blades. This is a difficult decision for us to make, and our Forged and Fire champion is. Ron, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion, Jesse, Please surrender your blade. Not being the Forged and Fire champion is kind of not what I was looking for, but I lost to a, a heck of a competitor and a heck of a blade. Well done. Thank you. I'm very proud of the blade I turned in, but if I made this blade again, I would have took a little more time on my heat treat, made sure I had it perfect. Being able to start this journey with my son was pretty awesome. And I may not be the Forged and Fire champion, but I, I think I represented my family well. Ron, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. You've led your family to this position, and you'll be taking home a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. From beginning to end, this has been a great experience. So the Hardman House is getting the Forged and Fire championship. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. I will take your weapon and deliver some thrust and slashes on our dummy from the north. Trevor, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right, Trevor, first up, it is so light, just like a needle. Your point here allows for a very deep penetration without any effort. Overall, sir, it will kill. Good job. All right, Victor, your turn, so you ready? Ready. All right, Victor, let's talk about your sword here. It's not very light. Overall, though, it's pointy enough to thrust. The edge with a weight cuts, and it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. To test the strength and overall construction of your blades, just like an ice pick, I'm gonna be chipping ice. <laughs> Trevor, you're up first, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Trevor, you did pick up a slight bend in your tip. Having said that, I mean, this thing is so light, which is fantastic. Thank you. All right, Victor, you are up. Are you ready, sir? Ready.
Victor, first off, blade is the same shape as when we started out. Tip's still there, it's fine. Your fullers are there, but they're not very deep. And by not having them very deep, uh, this, this blade is, is very heavy. Uh, having said that, it's a strong blade. It took no damage, so well done. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpness test, the steel can stab and water bag slice. I will take your weapon. I'm gonna test the tip by thrusting into the cans and I'm gonna slash the bag. Tyree, you up first, you ready? I'm ready. All right, Trevor, no issues at all in stabbing into the can and the cut with your tip on that bag. You can see it's straight cut all the way through. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Victor, your turn. So you ready? Ready. All right, Victor, first up in the stabbing test. On one of the thrusts, it pushed the can in more than penetrated all the way through. But your edge is sharp on the bag, cut cleanly all the way through. More importantly, it will cut. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, I finished my discussion with your judges, and they've made their final decision. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Trevor, congratulations. You're the new Forged and Fire champion. Victor, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut by the narrowest of margins, and David Baker's gonna tell you why. Victor, the Epi de Combat was supposed to be a lightning-fast thrusting sword. The weight of your blade led it to be just a more difficult weapon to use. That's why we're letting you go. Victor, unfortunately, today, your blade doesn't make the cut. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then please leave the forge. This was a great experience, and just uh, holding my head high just to know I've had this opportunity to build this historical weapon. It performed well, and I'm proud of it. First thing I do when I go home, kiss the wife, my son, and start forging and get ready for my next uh, knife show. Trevor, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Come on forward, my friend. Good job. I can't buddy. believe that I one forged in fire feeling better than good the most fun i've had in years with the ten thousand dollars i i may buy a new sander most of it will go to my wife though